Howdy folks, welcome to a very special Jack Bauer episode of Retsu Talk. This is episode 24. We have 24 hours to record a podcast, and I've got the top minds here with me to do so. I've got Slow Beef. Hi. I've got John Proton John. Where's the bomb, Beatus? I'll tell you later. All right. Over my cold dead body. You guys even watch 24? I've never seen 24, no. I've seen the first three seasons. Isn't that a good show? Was that a good Jack Bauer impression, though, that I just did? The, the whispering? Yeah, it was beautiful. Okay. Ke- Kiefer Sutherland would have been proud. No. Thank you. No. I'm going to make a movie out of it. You're going to call it 20, 25? Yeah. Oh, uh, 242, actually. Some, <laughs> hey, before, the, before this goes off the rail, some big news in the world of Let's Play, huh? Huh? Oh, huh? oh boy. I'll tell you what it is. John, you want to hear my big story about Let's Play? Is this why the AP phone records got subpoenaed? Maybe. Um, I bought a house recently. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so now he can let's play in his new house. And I, I'm, I'm actually out on the deck while I'm doing this. Um, are, are, are you let's playing house right now? <laughs> um, my wife and I found a family of ducks in the pool this morning. They were very cute. A couple. They were named Harold and Betty. But let me tell you a story. Um, I talked about this last week on the podcast, I think. Do you remember? I do. Well, um, that night we found out the neighbor's car, um, the wife gets in it, puts it in neutral, accidentally, it rolls down her drive, down their driveway, across the street, into the side of the house, plowing through our mailbox, our bench, uh, part of our fence, missed the house by a foot, also destroyed a little retaining wall. And a family of ducks. Mm -hmm. Five days after closing. That is amazing. Few fuckers crying about Nintendo can cry me a <laughs> goddamn fucking river. I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. Um, insurance is going to cover it, obviously. It was just sort of ridiculous. But, hey, growing up, home ownership. How about it? What's it like living in a cursed haunted house? <laughs> it's very nice. It's I've been nice. I've been practicing a lot of Contra Shattered Soldier in the basement. I get to yell a lot. In, in real life, right? <laughs> Basically, yeah. He's just yeah. doing 30 flips in midair. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> throwing tennis balls in many directions at once. For the record, it is beautiful, and that is exactly how I describe Contra. Just saying. Mm, um, it's gorgeous. Yeah, totally. um, I don't know. Other than that, I've been contributing a lot to Dectalon's hard games thread. Um, finished Contra 3 and Contra Hardcore. Um, Dectalon and I are racing to finish Shattered Soldier, and I'm starting to do Revenge of Shinobi while I'm practicing. And um, I'm out of material. Are you going to S-rank Shattered Soldier? I think you kind of have to, honestly. Well, that's just for the secret, like, stupid ending they give you. Well, you know what it is? What's very weird about Shattered Soldier, like, in... Uh, what's different about it than the other Contras is, is it's, like, it's very rote memorization-based, you know? Yeah. Like, once you've practiced it enough, you just kind of S-rank it automatically, because you're like, I know exactly what to do, because there's so little variation in the game. You know what I mean? That is so derivative of Battletoads. Exactly. Here we go. Pishaw. Well, do you, th- do you think that way? Like, do you think Battletoads is sort of a game you just memorize and there's no skill involved, or...? I think there is skill involved, for sure. I mean, you have to know when things come up, but also you have to be kind of quick on the old D-pad, if you know what I mean, Johnny Boy. It's half and half for Battletoads, in my opinion, because, like like you said, reflexes for Rat Race and Clinger Winger, but for Terra Tubes, you need to remember where the gears are and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think Battletoads, I mean, from what I've seen of it, I'm not an expert like you guys are, but it does seem like certain levels, like the first level even, you do need reflexes. You need to actually, like, do beat-em-up style gameplay, you know, with the, the pigs coming at you and stuff. Do you agree? Or... Yeah, I'm totally agree. It kind of marks itself as a beat-em-up, but it's like there's not that much actual beat-em-up in it. Yeah, and the Super Nintendo Battletoads was even worse on that front. Because you had one stage that was, maybe two stages that were more or less beat-em-up, then everything else was... Totally not that at all. Well, that's the thing. I mean, and like uh, with the Contra games, well, what I like about the hard games right is we get to discuss sort of what makes a game difficult. And I know Dectalon and Figgle talked about this in a previous podcast, but Contra 3, I feel like, has a sort of certain balance of there's a lot of reflex, but you have to know what's coming. But Shattered Soldier is up, is like 90, 90 to 95% just you have to know what's coming and know where it's coming from. You know what I mean? And then you'll just master it and you're done. Whereas Battletoads, it's like, what do you think, 50-50? I think 50-50 is pretty fair, more yeah. or less. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. 
So are you going to do Neo Contra after? Or are you just going to ignore that? I don't have Neo Contra, so fucking I'm ignoring it. I'm not. It's been. It's actually pretty easy. I think it's one of the easier Contras. I think Shattered Soldier is actually the toughest, just because you have to like, you have to go through it over and over again until you really get everything down. Yeah, and then if like the extra endings, because if you you can get through the stages, but if you had like crap rankings, you get a short version of the game. Well, as I understand it too, you can't even get like yeah certain stages without like the A rank, S rank kind of stuff, which is by killing everything and not dying. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. John, you sound upset. No, I just... I don't know. I, I have been in a, a mood lately, so I guess it's going to transfer a little bit to this. Sorry about it. It's nothing against you guys at all, or or the, the big news going on. Is it a mood to podcast? <laughs> you know it! <laughs> all right! <laughs> I'm the uh, warm-up entertainment for Retsu Talk. I understand. <laughs> yeah. This wasn't in my green room screaming. <laughs> well, I played through Metal Gear Rising recently. Oh yeah? How'd that go? It is an insanely fun game. All of the hype you've heard about how fun it is to play is totally on, in my opinion. Is it three hours long, like everyone's saying, though? It is very, very short. It's like, you know, the ending of Metal Gear Solid 4 in a video game. <laughs> That's about how long it is. What the hell are you talking about? That was like 80 hours. <laughs> Well, okay. Skyrim, basically. Skyrim. Oh, okay. I mean, you mean the ending credit sequence that was like three hours. I mean, it's made by Platinum Games, the same guys who made Vanquish, which I talked about many, many aeons of episodes ago. So I kind of knew what to expect coming in. It's just all fun gameplay yeah, you know, with a little bit of Metal Gear in the backdrop, but I don't really think, even though it has Metal Gear in the name, I don't, I wouldn't consider it a Metal Gear game, per se. Well, there's still, like, three hours of Kodak calls if you really want to do that. Yeah, that's one thing I would criticize the game on a little bit, is the overblown cutscenes, or conversations, rather, are kind of out of place there compared to a Metal Gear game, because mm -hmm. I found myself listening to those and getting... You know, kind of in a Metal Gear Solid game, I was kind of like, okay, this is conversation's interesting. But then in Metal Gear Rising, I was more about wanting to go back and slice dudes up rather than listen to Boris yak on about how this machine is put together and what it does. You know, <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that because from everything I've seen of Metal Gear Rising, I I didn't even think about the codec conversations. I'm sort of surprised to hear you say that they're still in there. And for, well, for the most, to be fair, for the most part, it's like in Metal Gear Solid where you hit select button, you can select someone to talk to, it's it's pretty optional actually going out and talking to your uh, colleagues and whatnot. There are a few exceptions to that, but for the most part, if you're not interested in hearing you know lore around Metal Gear Rising, which is not all that interesting compared to a Metal Gear game, you don't really have to. Hmm. You can just have fun and slice shit up, and that is really, really fun to do. I actually found that the combat, the, the game itself, the tutorial, is very, very minimal. Mm-hmm. So it tells you about, you know, here's one attack button, here's another attack button, here's how you parry, here's how you run fast. But it doesn't really tell you how important those aspects of the combat are. And so if you aren't aware of what you need to do to be successful, then you'll probably fuck up and die a lot. Cause so, for instance, in like the first stage, I got killed a lot in kind of the first significant combat section... And I felt like it wasn't because the game was overly difficult, but I felt like it was because I wasn't doing something right. So I had to do some outside research and figure out, oh, you have to actually parry in order to now really... Let, uh, let's focus on this. You uh, are terrible at video games, therefore you <laughs> failed Metal Gear Rising. You know, that's fair. And I will say, when you go into blade mode and you have to directionally turn your sword to slice shit, that's, that's kind of... It's kind of frustrating. Let's I'm be not, I'm, because I suck at it, and therefore the game is terrible. Let's be honest. You, you wanted to turn the sword on yourself and commit seppuku. You know, Raiden does say seppuku a couple of times in the game. Wait, that's actually really? the, that's how you end the game quick. That's the speed run mm -hmm. tactic. Yeah. Can I say? Do you do you guys remember a game called Bushido Blade for the PlayStation? Oh yeah, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember you hit select to commit? No, I don't think you commit seppuku. You surrendered, and then your enemy could kill you. Yeah. And also, do you remember the game, um, shit, what was it? Uh, was it Tekken or Soul Blade? What am I thinking? Who do you, where you play as Yoshimitsu? Uh, That's Soul Blade. Soul Blade. That's Soul Blade? And, and yeah. Calibur, yeah. Yeah, he has a seppuku move also. John, you and I were having this good chat about, like, awesome fighting games with, like, Samurai and seppuku, and then Beatus ruined it. Why don't we just get rid of him and we'll become the new Retsubu? There was a Samurai, you never know. 
That's he's, true. He's trying. Give him points for trying. I understand. No, you're right. You're right. Yoshimitsu had a move where he'd stab himself in the stomach and like hit the other guy with it, right? I'll have you know that when I played Final Fantasy Tactics, I used Samurai in my formation frequently. I'm just saying for all those kids out there who never heard of Bushido Blade, that was a really excellent... That was back when Squaresoft did things really well. And, like, it, they were coming off of Final Fantasy VII, and they are like, why don't we make really unique games? And they did things like Einhander, which was this awesome shoot 'em up that, like, did things that you didn't see in other shoot 'em ups And then Bushido Blade, which is their take on a fighting game, where it was one-hit kills, and if you hit the person's limb, they couldn't use that limb anymore. It was, like, really an excellent take on fighting games. And air guys. Oh, okay. Well, then, then they sort of stumbled for a while. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, if that stuff didn't sell, that's the problem. That's why they stopped. Mm. Well, it's either that or the Square Enix merger. It was one of the two, if not both. I just remember, though, playing, like, so much Bushido Blade in college, and just, like, all my friends loved it and everything. Like, even the non-video game, you're like, this is actually cool. Um, my, my girlfriend at the time, who hated video games, even, like, Bushido Blade, because with the one-hit kills, you had a shot at it. But you could still be good at it, you know? I don't know. How'd that relationship pan out, huh? <laughs> Not well at all. <laughs> that bitch ain't in the house. Oh. <laughs> you talking about me? No. <laughs> <laughs> you got the microphone. <laughs> no, not in, no, I'm not. I'm talking about this excellent video game. Just an update. Uh, Slobby's put the house on sale. <laughs> yeah. So if there are any buyers in the Jersey area, the Jersey area. <laughs> Just find the house that has a car crash into the side. It's, it's no problem. And, uh, well, aside from Metal Gear Rising, I'm still doing the Galaxy 2 LP very slowly. How's that what part of the game are you at now? I am about to close out World 4. Nice. I recently recorded some more footage of Prankster Comets, and I know you had a lot of fun with that last video, Beef Man. I forget every video we do. That's fair. That's fair. No. That's your coping mechanism, right? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> That's right. But, I, you know, like you said, Metal Gear Rising was short. They have VR missions, which I haven't gotten into much yet, but I'll try to do those, some extra content. There's some DLC that came out recently that I've heard is heard mixed things about. And then I've got uh, got some Bioshock Infinite fever. been wanting to get that game. I'd very, rec- I'd very highly recommend that. I really liked Bioshock Infinite. I've been trying to play that game for the past month and haven't even succeeded in starting. Have you tried downloading it? Uh, I have a copy, actually. It's been sitting on my 360 for like a month now. Okay. Have you tried putting it in the 360? Fuck, that's the thing I was that's, doing wrong. That's kind of the first step, John. I think Damn that's it. the first thing it says in the manual, actually, for the game. <laughs> no, I think what they say is the copyright rules in the first page of the book. So. <laughs> Whoa. Segway time. <laughs> Don't put this on YouTube. I think we've, I think we've teased these fine people enough. Yeah, so big news broke recently. Or I should say, uh, tipped recently, rather. Nintendo, they're cracking down on the Let's Plays, the LPs. They're uh, making the new new law of the land when it comes to uh, their footage. Okay. So I think it's important to clarify what exactly they're doing, because I think a lot of the negative reaction is coming from misinformation. No, I don't know. I do agree with you. Um, I've been kind of outspoken on Twitter, and... I don't, I don't want to say I support Nintendo, I just think that they're within their right, but I, want to be, I, I do want to be clear what's going on without expressing my opinion or whatever. Um, in YouTube, you can get what's called a copyright strike, and other companies such as Sega can file those against you, and if you get three of them, your account's done. You can appeal right. them. So that is when they put a claim on your video and want it to be removed. Yeah, and it gets removed. And your right. recourse is you file what's called a counterclaim. And the counterclaim can take two weeks to process, and you have to reveal your personal information to the other party who is filing the copyright strike. And then if they don't respond in two weeks, YouTube will put your video back up, and then you get to go to court with that, possibly. That's not what Nintendo's doing. That's what Sega did in the past. We'll talk about that in a bit. But just to be clear, um, the one thing is your channel will not be taken down by Nintendo. They're doing a thing called third-party matching, which means that they can run ads on your video without your permission. If you were running ads on it, Nintendo's ads now come in place. They get the revenue for it. If you weren't running ads on it, Nintendo can now run ads on your video, and they get the revenue for it. Um, that correct, John? Yeah, more or less, yeah. 
But but just to be clear to everyone, like Nintendo is not taking down your channel. It's not like Sega from before. Right. Nintendo has not come out and said we don't want these videos present. What they are saying is these people are making revenue or these videos are being broadcast without our permission. So we want to put ads on this and have revenue come into us for our property being showcased to people. To, to clarify, it's not just less play videos. It's just that's the most common thing that's been mm -hmm. noticed. Right. right. And, and to be clear, by the way, I'm not defending them when I say they're not taking their channels. I'm just trying to say a fact there. Right. So. Yeah, and John, like you said, it's not just LP videos, but it's, you know, anything that has footage of their game. So, you know, walkthroughs, commentary list walkthroughs, reviews. I think it there was a thing that said it used to be anything that was 10 minutes or more, but I think that's just any video period. Official? Yeah, yeah that 10 minute or less thing is false. Okay. Yeah, I, I, from what I've researched on it, that is true, it is false. Um, was that confusing? Um, the article I read from IGN, according to Nintendo's official statement on it, is they're, they are saying it's based on duration of the audio and or images of their property used. So I don't think review it's not clear obviously and i'm not a lawyer and nintendo hasn't given enough a statement for whatever but it, it, it reviews should be okay it's just like walkthroughs let's plays what have you are under target as far as i understand it yeah right? because they're basically showing off the majority of the game yeah more or less right right so it really tipped recently, but uh, John, this is something you told us. It's actually been happening gradually over a long span of time, but it's when it started to hit people who are quote unquote popular on YouTube and really how the whole Let's Play thing got brought in when uh, their videos started getting flagged or not flagged, but uh, content ID'd is when, uh, and people started being vocal about it is when it really got brought to the, uh, the media. Yeah, the what game it, media. What it seemed like at first was, I think around February, some people were starting to see like reports of Nintendo claiming them. Some people thought they were fake and like, oh, maybe it's just some punk kid who's pretending to be Nintendo to get rid of a video. Sure. But it ends up it actually was the company. The company sent out a notification to people confirming, yes, this is actually Nintendo doing this. So that, that all came to a head within the past couple of days. And so as it does with any kind of story that breaks like this, the Twitterverse has... <laughs> Reacts quite, shall we say, strongly. Knee-jerk reaction, yeah. Very knee-jerky, so I think that's a lot of where the misinformation has come from, saying, you know, how dare you, Nintendo, uh, threaten the livelihood of LPers removing videos when they are not, in fact, removing videos. And I think it's important to reiterate that the videos themselves are not going anywhere. The content still exists and is unchanged, just if ads are present, the revenue is being redirected. I don't want people to think that this is a totally pro Nintendo podcast. Uh, no. I mean, this episode, and I, I and while I do agree with Nintendo in so far as I think, that, well, we'll get into it in a bit. Um, but you know, t to be fair, it's not like the Sega thing where they're taking down your channel. It it just can you go over kind of what that sure. facet is? So as far as I understood it, around November two thousand twelve, Sega of Japan, and this is just sort of strange and random decided to start giving copyright ID claims against people who had Shining Force videos on their YouTube channels. And, by, and the difference between third-party match and copyright claims is if you get three copyright strikes against your YouTube account, it's gone. And that's, I was mentioning before, you have to file the counterclaim, blah, blah, blah. And then they would just do this indiscriminately. So a lot of people who do Let's Plays or whatever have epi multiple episodes of Shining Force, and therefore they get their accounts done in one shot, you know? A um, couple of big name people got hit by it, Total Biscuit, one of those people, and I got some of this information from him. So, in February, Sega came out with, Sega of America, mind you, came out with this apology, and they said, hey, this was totally wrong of us to do, um, we shouldn't have done it, we, we apologize for any inconvenience, for their exact quote, we, if you contact us at the following email address, we'll turn down their, the copyright notices and help reinstate your account. They actually never made good at it, get good on it as of today. That's it was kind of bullshit. Here's another thing about that too. Supposedly, some videos that were hit didn't actually have any Shining Force footage or music <laughs> in it at all. <laughs> Apparently, wow. some of the videos, if they mentioned Shining Force or if they had like the phrase in the title, those got tagged as well. Well, you know, this cute cat is actually featured in Shining Force. <laughs> 
Oh, great. Now the podcast is going to be pulled down. Look what you've done. <laughs> Shining Force does, in fact, has cheeseburger. <laughs> so that, uh, I don't think so. I wonder, if, I wonder if some of the, what I feel is a slight overreaction to what Nintendo did, has to come from that, though. Or comes from that, maybe. Maybe... The knee jerkiness, you mean? Yeah, maybe they feel it's the same thing. It's just Nintendo doing what Sega did before. Right. You know, um, I, you know, I I feel like uh, you know, I, I Sega was in the wrong for that. I mean, they have the right to do it per se, but it's bullshit. Like you ask, you know, you don't have to like take down somebody's fucking YouTube channel over it. Just freaking ask first. Right. You know, that's why what Nintendo is doing just seems kind of innocuous to me when they're like. Hey, I, I don't want you making money off our videos, and you know we have a right to that. I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? I think that Nintendo can't quite do that because there's so many people who do Nintendo videos. Like, out of the three companies, I'd say there's so much more Nintendo content on YouTube than any of the three. Okay. Like, do you, do you feel that way, or because because I think it it has to do with nostalgia, really? Because all of us grew up with it. That's fair. Yeah. Because without actually seeing any stats on it, I mean, I couldn't say what. Like how the quantity of it that's out there. I, I really think there's two different perspectives on the whole thing. So the one is, is Nintendo in the right to claim these videos? And then secondly, is it smart for Nintendo to put the claim on these videos? So A, is it in their right to do so? Well, it's hard, really difficult to argue no. Yeah. Because it is... I mean, you can't deny it is their footage. I mean, it is, is footage of their content, their games, their IP. But then, B, is it smart? I have trouble seeing the rationale for them doing so in the first place. Like, what it really benefits them besides a few extra bucks here and there for this huge international company. Okay, I know a number of people were arguing about the whole ethical ideal behind it, like... Nintendo fanboys are pretty gung ho about the company. To suddenly say, like, "Hey guys, like we appreciate what you do, but we'd like the money that you are earning," kind of burns a lot of people. And I feel like it's sure. gonna hurt them in the long run, kind of a long tail damaging factor. But short term, it seems smart. I'll tell you what. Um, I you know I totally agree with you, and in fact, I adamantly agree this money is Nintendo. So I'll just play the role of devil's advocate here, okay? And I'll do my best toward it. All right. Okay, and even if I really don't believe it, I have to freaking pretend to hell. Go ahead. It's called acting. <laughs> Look, um, I work really hard. I play Nintendo's <laughs> games. <laughs> I uh, no, it's it's true. I I I play The Legend of Zelda, and I talk over it, and I think really long and hard, and I edit things together, and I try to promote the game. And you know what? A lot of people have told me they bought. Um, Twilight Princess or Skyward Sword over my videos and stuff. I've only helped Nintendo over this. I do this self-promotion just for my own sake because I love Nintendo and I feel like I get you to buy their games and, you know, I get a little ad revenue on the side. It's fucking paltry compared to your video game sales. What the fuck is the problem? Why are you doing this to me? Again, well, the problem with that argument is there is absolutely nothing to back that up except anecdotal stuff. Yeah, like you can't prove sales are directly correlated to your video. And at the same time, you can say, well, people watch LPs and then they get the game experience that way, and so they don't buy the game in the first place. Again, that's anecdotal. You can't prove that, but you can't prove it either way. So it's rather nebulous, and you can't say really one way or the other how these sorts of videos benefit Nintendo without revenue going to them. But, okay, um... My commentary track on top of the game, that's my copyright. And okay. <laughs> I think I think fair use applies when I talk over the video game. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair use, you can take part of a copyrighted work and use it as part of something you're putting together, but not making the entirety of a copyrighted work, claiming it as your own and making profit off of it. And even YouTube's own monetization page has a disclaimer against claiming video game footage for yourself. It's just that no game companies really care to Edith, enforce that until now. Why, why do people who make movie reviews get to make money even though they don't <laughs> do the movies? Why do football commentators make jobs out of it? <laughs> it's for the love of the game. For the, 
I'm trying. I, I've really read a <laughs> no, lot of okay. these okay. counter. Okay, I've got I've got an actual anecdotal thing that happened to me. If you want okay. me to try this one, okay. 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 So uh, a couple months back, uh, Nintendo's uh, PR company contacted us, the, the Runaway Guys, to do a video for them. This is good. I know this. Go. Okay, so they got us to do uh, a playthrough of New Super Mario Brothers 2. They got us to do like the coin rush mode. So we put up a video for that, and they linked it on their Facebook and Twitter. So uh, they explicitly told us to do it. They didn't give us any money for it, but they just said, we'll give you like actual promotion online. Mm-hmm. A couple months later, they actually claimed that video for themselves. So now, hmm. like, this is the case of they asked us to do this. They explicitly asked us to do it, but now they're claiming it. So do we get upset as a result of this, or do we say, well, they gave us promotion, so technically we got something out of essentially nothing? But, like, I, I think where I'd agree with you on that one is that they didn't make the rules of this quote-unquote contract clear, right? Where they say, like, hey, you want to promote us? You want to do it? You know, we'll, we'll use... It's like a cross-promotional thing. Like, your YouTube channel's popular? Help promote us. And then, like, two months later, like, no, 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 we'll be taking that money. Like, no, well, that's... Well, yeah. yeah, it sounds like ad revenue was never even part of the equation, but then when they thought, oh, we can get this, well, we should have that. And I think it depends, too. Like, some people have been saying it's a different part of the company that's actually making this decision. Like, we talked to, I think, Golan Harris is the company, and some people are saying this is coming straight from, like, Nintendo's business department or, like, their actual legal department. So it could be also miscommunication. Who knows? Right. But, I mean, the the thing that, like, and I know I'm kind of half making a joke, but half trying here is, though, I mean, the the problematic thing is that, I mean, they do have a pretty goddamn good foothold to say... It's true. Like none of this would be happening if the games didn't exist in the first place. That's exactly my point, right? And and I, I think what annoys me about some of the backlash is that there's this sort of arrogance going on where they say like, "How dare they?" And it's like you wouldn't. This wouldn't be anything without the game, you know. It's not right the way they went about it, and it's stupid for them in the long run. But like, sure. that's totally within their right. And if you made a video game or any sort of creative force, you might want to. Um, you might you might want to have the right to say like I don't want people doing certain things with my creative content. Wasn't there someone in the Sandcastle today who like as a developer said more people have made money? Yeah, do you want to tell that story? Yes, Mr. Senabozo, who is a Metroid Prime guest. He worked on um, Half Life Source Elevator, and Source you're allowed to make games or whatever, right? He released this game totally for free, and he wanted it to be for free. But people ran ads on his video, and he found out this one popular channel got like. 500 bucks or so from it, right? And he got really annoying because he's like, you know, I worked my ass off to make this. I didn't want people making revenue off it, especially when it's, like, kind of my work and such, you know? But doesn't he have a right to say at some point, like, hey, you can make your revenue however you want. If other game developers are cool with it, that's fine. But if I don't want it, why the hell are you allowed to? You know? I I think, like, that's a mod, right, the one that he worked on? So, well, no, no, no. It was from the Source Engine. Oh, it was just Source Engine. Okay, I thought it was a mod, because in that case, you can argue the case of his is also a derivative action, but if it's like a full-blown game, then yeah, like he has, he has completely right. Right. I, I misspoke. I said it was Half-Life Source, like, but it's, 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 it was the Source Engine. Okay. So, um, no, but I mean, that, like, that, that can, and then that gets in the gray area, too, of like mods and ROM hacks and blah, 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 but... I mean, at what point as a developer do you get to say, like, I don't want this? Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, if, if I'm frictional games, right, and certain people scream over my video and shit like that, <laughs> but, like, is there a point where I could say, like, I don't, I, don't, I don't mind Let's Play, I don't like it when people put their face over some of the graphics or their annotations over the graphics or promote themselves over it? And I'm not, like, trying to diss those people. I'm just saying, do I as a developer get to say at some point, like, please don't promote my game like this? Now, I think it depends, too. Now, uh, in the chat for you two, I just linked you a Reddit thread that I found earlier. It's okay. a list of companies and game studios that allow for monetized LPs. People are so panicked about this that they're compiling lists of what are safe to LP and make money off of. <laughs> okay. No, that's, wow. that's totally fair, right? I'm okay with that. I mean, honestly. It's helpful, right? It is true. I suppose. But, I mean, like, is this also still part of that knee-jerk reaction overall? Well, I think it's just, it's such a gray area, and now it's starting to become a little less gray on a case-by-case basis. Well, yeah. And people are starting to realize this now, and so I think that's where some of the panic is coming from. And, uh, Solby, if I think it's like you said, uh, or alluded to a bit earlier, how much work, quote-unquote, is it for an LPer to, say, 
slap a scare came on and yell over a game and then profit from it over something that people spent a significantly greater amount of time actually producing, and then they see nothing from that. But that's the thing, right? Like, because there's a point where you you look at someone who plays Nintendo games, and maybe, you know, so, uh, maybe they don't promote it. Maybe what they do is they just say, like, oh, uh, Link's Sword looks like a big dick and it's coming out. That certainly doesn't fucking fall in line with your marketing and how you want the brand to be perceived. And don't you have a right to say at some point, like, no, that's that's not fair. Like, I don't want my work being used like this. I, I can understand that, but at the same time, you can't control what people are going to say about a product regardless. Like, control, like, marketing only goes so far. Sure, but um, even your brand? Yeah, no. I get, You would get protective over something, I guess, like... But and this is the thing too. We don't know if this what part of the company is dictating this. If this was like something from the CEOs, like yeah, this YouTube thing is driving us nuts. Stop it. But the, the the tricky thing about it though too is you have to understand too. Like a lot of companies, it's not like just like some CEO sitting up on the thirty fifth floor who doesn't fucking look down and understand. Like you're talking about like smaller game developers again, like frictional games, like the guys trying to promote Amnesia, right? And I'm not dissing PewDiePie all that stuff, but I am saying that like. If there's a point where you want to build out this horror game and you like it when people play the game in the dark and scream over it, that helps promote your game. But then let's just say some guy comes along and just, like, makes dick jokes over it or makes a, a goof out of the whole thing. You're like, fuck, this isn't helping my marketing. And, in fact, maybe this guy is, like, actually dissuading people from buying the game. Do you, as the developer, have a right to say, this one person... I don't like how they're marketing my game, the game I spent money on, the game I did development work on, you know, the game my marketing department, who I pay, you know, don't I get to say at some point, like, no, you don't get to do this, maybe you do, maybe you don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, I understand, but it gets to the point of pr- public opinion as well, too. Now, let's say in the case of the guys who have developed, like, Slender Amnesia, say they don't want PewDiePie okay. to do videos anymore because sure. and- barrels and rape and all that. Sure, sure, sure. So what happens if you as a company go out to this guy and say, hey, we'd like you to stop doing it? Like, if you say if they, he refuses to do it, and then you, you pull the strings of copyright action and get the video pulled. Okay. It depends on the person in this case. Like, they can, it can hurt your public image, because he could say, hey, this company got me a copyright strike. Look at what they've done. How about you boycott them? Or how about you just give them bad publicity? Sure. It's, it's, it's the, it comes back to the ethics argument. Like, is this a good idea? Will, in the long run, this benefit everyone, or will this hurt you? No, that's a good point, too, right? And that's the thing, and, I, and I'm, I'm not trying to bring it to certain people, even though I hate them. Um, <laughs> no, uh, uh, no, 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 no. If you don't have a PR department, you're a team of, like, 10, 20 developers, you know, maybe, maybe it does behoove you to, like, come up to the person and say, like, hey, would you mind not doing this, or hey, would you mind giving me a plug or something? And I think, I think honestly... What Nintendo did wrong is the sort of quote unquote strong arm, strong arm approach. And what I like about Microsoft's approach was, as far as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong here, they issued a statement that said, hey, we understand you guys are doing videos on Halo, some of our IP is here. You totally can. Please don't monetize it. Otherwise, we'll be running ads on your videos. You if, know? I re- if I remember correctly, when they did that, uh, okay. A, there was a big freak out when it happened, just like this. Really? And- yeah, there was okay. actually, but it was it was short lived. I think it took like three days, and people pointed out like, "Hey, this is almost the exact same jargon as used to be there, so you can calm down." Okay. And B, I think they stated in the thing that you could get a license to actually monetize this stuff. I think Blizzard does the same thing as well, but like it was it was for Machinima things, but apparently like groups like uh, Machinima, Game Station, Youch, all those other gaming channels, they have the ability to still monetize those game f- footage as well. And see, it's funny, like, the shitty thing about that is, like, when you talk about these licenses and such, you get into this sort of exclusivity kind of thing where it's, like, only certain people who are partnered with just the right companies get to do this. Well, I mean, that's a whole other ball game in general right there. But it is at the heart of what we're talking about, more or yeah, less, right? It is true. Isn't it crazy that we're having this conversation? <laughs> I mean, like, remember when... Like, I mean, seriously, remember when Let's Play started taking off, say, on Something Awful back in 2006, 2007? We would never have had this sort of conversation. It was never about, you know, revenue versus companies claiming copyright. It was about, this game is fun, I want to show it off. 
Let's have a community discussion about it. See, the re- the real problem is when we got that sub for him. That ruined everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks, Slow Beef. That wasn't my fault. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, um, it was. Wasn't that Zorak's fault? No, uh, how so? No, because he's like, I'm sick of seeing all this stuff clotting up games here. Get it was Deceased Crab's fault, it? actually. Oh, some, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Fault. I really do blame some big name LPers, not all of them. You know who I'm talking about. Who are just like, um, they don't give a shit. It, 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 it used to be. And a lot of popular LPers are like this, where they're like, hey, here's a cool video game. Or here's a shitty one. You might like it, you might not. If I'm funny, that's part of it, right? And all this stuff. But when you talk about these people who are just like, hey, uh, me, 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 me. By the way, Bioshock Infinite, if you like it. But if you can see it past all my annotations and shit like that, you know? That's exactly the thing, yeah. Yeah. And of course these fucking game companies look at that and go, I'm sorry, you're making how much off my fucking footage and you're doing this? You're not helping promote me. You're promoting yourself using me as the springboard. And that's where this thing really took off, too, was this uh, fellow named Zach Scott, who I hadn't heard of before this ordeal kind of broke on the web. He submitted this open letter to Nintendo, which I have open in my browser right now. And it is such a thinly veiled way of saying, me, 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 where's my money? So he says, I just want to express my feelings on the matter of Nintendo claiming not just my YouTube videos, but from several LPs as well. I'm a Nintendo fan. I waited in the cold overnight to get a Wii. I'm a 3DS ambassador. I got a Wii U at midnight when I already <laughs> had one in the mail. Wait, I'm sorry. What is a 3DS ambassador? Uh, John? That just means you bought the system before they did a price cut. Okay. Thanks. So, a real ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> did, did the word ambassador mean that at some point? <laughs> this no, com- he's actually in the UN. This country yeah. chose me to represent them before the price cut. <laughs> All right. Sorry, anyway. Before the economic crash. Right. <laughs> right. He goes on to say, I've been a fan of Nintendo since the NES, and I've owned all of their systems. So a, a very heartfelt story. With that said, I think filing claims against LPRs is backwards. Video games aren't like movies or TV. Each playthrough is a unique audiovisual experience. When I see a film that someone else is also watching, I don't need to see it again. When I see a game that someone else is playing, I want to play that game for myself. Sure, there may be game, there may be some people who watch games rather than play them, but are those people even gamers? My viewers watch my gameplay videos for three main reasons. One, to hear my commentary slash review. Two, to learn about the game and how to play certain parts. Three, to see how I handle and react to certain parts of the game. Since I started my gaming channel, I've played a lot of games. I love Nintendo, so I've included their games in my lineup. Sorry, I, 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 can I refute points one, two, and three there? There's, there's just a couple more sentences. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, but until their claims are straightened out, I won't be playing their games. I won't because it jeopardizes my channel's copyright standing, which it parentheses, which it doesn't, and the livelihood of all LPers. That concludes his statement. Who the fuck is Zach Scott again? <laughs> Some big name YouTube guy. Okay, fine. Um, alright. But how many times do you say, my, 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 I, 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 me, me, me? God, how do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Alright. I get it. I mean, you know, you, you put work in your Let's Play channel and all that stuff, but where did you think this was going? Where did you think it came from? That's exactly the thing. People go into this, and there are a fair number of people who make significant ad revenue and more or less make a living off of this, but you are... I'm sorry, but you're stupid if you think... if you put all of your eggs in this LP basket and then expect to have job security for the rest of your life. Well, I mean, okay... There are there are certain people who are very nice people and very good people and very entertaining people um, who do this stuff, and it's fine. But you, you have to diversify, and you have to be ready for it. Um, John, I understand you're friends with Chugga Conroy and such, who, yeah. who has a, a channel that is 95 to 99% Nintendo stuff. Yeah, almost every game was made by Nintendo except for, I believe, two. And the one thing I, I applaud him for is that, like, um, we talked to him a little through you a little before this chat and he was just like no i'm not gonna stop doing nintendo games what i do you know what i mean he's yeah just gonna... yeah and i think that's that's the the kind of thing we've been 
uh, skipping this whole time is, for the most part, it should not impact what people are doing. That's right. It should because yes. the videos aren't going anywhere. If what you're doing is wanting to share a game experience with people and show off something, then these events should not change that. I don't think a lot of businesses succeed by saying, I think I can get a revenue stream out of fucking over these people and using other people's, like, IPs and shit like that, right? This is all start... A lot of this thing started out of, like, I like these games and I want to show them off. But anyway, no, I, I would I would just like to say, like, I, I did appreciate when Chugga apparently is like, yeah, I'm going to keep doing what I do, whatever, and maybe I will move on to... Or, I don't know if he said that part, but, you know. Because it's all about the love of the game, which is the reason we all started doing this in the first place. Absolutely, and... Go- and good for him. Nintendo Capri Sun can go fuck himself. But Chugger... <laughs> I can go I'm... ask him, too. He's in the other room. Wait, why are the fuck are the three of you together? <laughs> we're, we're just hanging out together. We're having like a little mini vacation. <laughs> oh, hey, your guys are all in the area? Oh, what a weird coincidence. <laughs> I'm sorry, you have vacations with your once play friends? No, no, it was just like we were going to record stuff, so like this to me was a vacation because I'm just getting away from home and work. So. Yeah, fuck the Nintendo thing. We have a new top. <laughs> They're all hanging out at Delfino Plaza for the holidays. <laughs> can, I, can, I, uh, can, I, can I get new Nintendo Capri Sun in here to ask him something about PAX East 2013? <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Do you want to? He's right there in the room nah, right now. No, it's, it's fine. No, I'm kidding. All right. Um, well, actually, no. I mean, I don't know. What does he think of this whole Nintendo debacle? All right. Uh, Tim? What's your what's your opinion on the whole Nintendo thing that's going on? Um, to be perfectly honest, I kind of understand why they're doing it. Can you hear him? He, he said he could like, understand like why they're doing it. What did he say? Come a little bit closer. Oh, dude. I'm joking. He, I'm sorry. All right. Okay. <laughs> this this is perfect perfect podcast material. <laughs> okay. well, I mean, I never took this for granted. I knew it was only a matter of time. They were going to do it eventually. So yeah. I can't complain. I understand why they're doing it. Tim, I have, a, I have a more important question for you. Can you hear me? Uh, he has a more important question for you. This is Slow Beef. Can you hear me? I like how we're using an interpreter for this. I'm actually doing hand signals to do this. Uh, <laughs> they, they can't hear you right now, so... No, no, I, I can hear him. Actually, oh, I can hear him, too. Yeah. Now, yeah. now he can hear you. No, we, we heard him before, John. No, 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 as in he can hear you guys. Oh, good. Okay. This is gold! John, listen. <laughs> John. <laughs> Tim, Tim, listen to me. All the runaway guys are the same. Okay. Absolutely. That hurts. I, I have a question. If you had to, if you had one chance to leave the Runaway Guys and join Retsu Prey, would you do it? You motherfuckers. <laughs> oh my god. We don't just Retsu Prey Nintendo games. <laughs> <laughs> Those fuckers will never touch your ad revenue as far as you... No, I'm kidding. Um... <laughs> Wait, will you will you now will you now change your name to Greedy Fuckers Capri Sun? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know you guys can't comment on that. Uh, I'll think about it. <laughs> you've Great. torn this group apart, guys. Look at what you've done. <laughs> oh, and see, he's taking it like a champ too. Look at how he reacts to this news. He takes a let's play vacation. <laughs> <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's not a let's play vacation. God damn it, Venus. <laughs> well, what else would you call it? I mean, you're all hanging out together. You called it a vacation. Well, it's a, okay. It's a vacation for me. It's not for them. I don't know. <laughs> I love this notion of, like, Nintendo's copywriting our videos. We need a week off. <laughs> let's go to Aruba, the three of us. Is it a vacation, John, or is it a corporate retreat? Note to self, never open mouth. <laughs> Delightful. What were we talking about? I don't know. So, wait, let's look at the spectrum, okay? Um, let's start with the bottom. Sega says, um, hey, our Japanese wing is just going to close YouTube accounts for no good reason. And then we'll apologize and say, we'll fix things, but then we actually won't. Then you got Nintendo, which is like, hey, your, your ad revenue is now ours. Thanks, goodbye. And then you got Microsoft that's like, hey, we're at least going to ask you not to do that. And then you have Sony with the PlayStation 4, like, no, please, God, put our shit on YouTube. We're begging you. We'll bake it into the fucking console. Help. Share, share, share. Share, please. No, um, (laughs) I don't know. I just, I, you know, I, I I can't, I just can't feel too badly. I I think, I think really the only thing that Let's Players will get, or want sympathy for is their, like, you put a lot, like, some of them. 
put a mm-hmm. lot of work into their videos and it sucks to suddenly get kind of slapped for it by the company that you're trying to help in a way but I I get that but I just... is how does their work compare to the people who made the original work in comparison yeah like it's it's so much more on the actual developers of the game like I I completely understand Nintendo's stance right but at the same time I understand why let's players and like vi- uh, video content producers are a little upset at this not solely because of the revenue but because it feels like the company that they like and are promoting their works for are suddenly kind of slapping them for it but it's hard to have sympathy for these big let's players who make money doing this when they say this is wrong i'm not going to do this anymore it's just really hard to see that not as a thinly veiled way of saying i'm not getting any cash from this anymore so i'm going to do things that will continue to get me revenue oh i'm not going to deny it people are definitely doing it just for the money there are people on youtube who just do these videos for the money right and i and i i think even on twitter you and i encountered that one person who was just like this sucks i'm not you know i was going to do zelda but not yeah. anymore and it's like but you still can you won't get paid for it, but if yeah, you really like Zelda... This is a person who said they were like, let's play for the first time, right? And they're like, I wanted yeah. to do this, but now I can't earn money out of it, so why am I going to do it? It's like, fuck you, yeah. I, yeah. I actually had a, a fan like message me once, and they said, hey, uh, my dad won't let me start Let's Playing unless I tell him that it's possible to be a career. So can you tell me if Let's Playing is a viable career choice? I'm sorry, what kind of dad is that? I have no <laughs> idea. But of course, my my answer was no. It's not. Son, if you don't give someone your W nine, I ain't interested. <laughs> it's just like, but it's just such crap to be like, you know, I don't care about the other people who were making money off this or at all. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just repeating myself here. Well, it's just hard to feel sympathy for them. It's it's one thing to do reviews and it's one thing to really put work into shit, but I just feel like the whole point of Let's Play when it started and when it kept going was just like this notion of. Um, Hey, you know what? Like, here's a game you might not have seen. Here's something you might not be familiar with. I'm helping promote it. And for that, I could give a lot more sympathy toward, like, all right, here's a fucking YouTube ad. I'll make 36 cents off it. (laughs) If that. (laughs) If eight people watch it. But, like, the notion of, like, a lot of these people nowadays are just like, um, hey, I got Metal Gear Rising today. Here's the whole playthrough. I'm the first to post it. And let's face facts here, it's not at all about promoting the game, it's the fact that this is a popular game that people might be Googling or looking up on YouTube, and they get the ad revenue off that. Right, the motivation is just the views. That's exactly it. It's not, it's not anything about Let's Play, it's not anything about promoting the game. It has to do with, like, I want to get on this game's hype. Right. And again, it's not all people who do Let's Play who are in that mindset, but the significant amount of people who are complaining to this degree, I think, fall in that category. I think another thing is, too, like a lot of the, the big YouTube channels that didn't originally do game, gaming content suddenly got into Let's Playing a while ago, I think around the time PewDiePie started <laughs> shooting up a lot. Yep. Like, I'm sure you can name a couple of channels right off the top of your head that are in that kind of boat that... Minecraft, total crap. Proton John SA. Yep, that's, that <laughs> fucker. Someone's got to shank that guy. But, like, yeah, like, all these channels just out of nowhere started, as soon as they found out they could monetize it, just gaming videos everywhere. I'll tell you the truth, I don't like the Minecraft guys because of this podcast they did or whatever, but, like, I went to watch their, like, Let's Play videos, and this guy, Vintage Beef, who I hate because of my name, but he played this, he did a Sleeping Dog Let's Play where he never played the game before, and he's just like, wow, this is great. I like this. And that's his commentary. And he played it on day one that he got it. And it's not because he wants to promote the game or promote a unique perspective or even because his video turned out just funny by trying it. I think it's he's like, you know what, fuck it. People want to see sleeping dogs and I have an HD capture device. Look, let's fucking face facts here. Easy money. <laughs> that is what it is, more yeah. or less. And you know what, too? And the fucked up thing with Let's Play, it's not even like a review, it's not a first impressions thing. You get so much fucking content out of the whole gameplay experience, because you have hours and hours of footage that you just take, you just talk over, run ads on, bang, you're done. I can't feel bad for you if Nintendo's like, no, that's fucked up. And what I do feel bad for is the fucking Let's Players who do, like, actually put some fucking work into it, and actually have a fucking point besides... This gets me money, you know? It, it's just a weird thing in general, what Let's Playing has become, basically. It really is. I don't, I don't even mind that people make money off it. It's just like, but... And not even, like, do it for any sort of moralistic or right reasons, but it's so fucking obvious when you're money-grubbing. 
You know what I mean? Yes. When you're like fucking just begging for it. Just like, give me that fucking dollar. I don't care who the fuck I fuck over. I don't care if no one buys Metal Gear Rising. As long as they see yeah. you play it on day fucking one, that's cool by me. It's you know, just there's such a hissy fit over what's happening when, in reality, it does not change at all of the experience for the people who are watching these videos. That's the thing. And it's they are like, still there. They're not being removed. The revenue is just going towards the actual content creators. And I'm sorry, but for the most part, you cannot call Let's Players content creators because it's not their content. Uh, but, I mean, they could be. They, I mean... Not content creator per it's, se, I guess. It's but, still a gray area is the thing. But you could totally have a Let's Play that helps promote the game and does all that stuff. It's just that, like, there's a line you draw when you, like, you say, it's about me versus it's about the game. Sometimes it can be blurry, but I'm sorry. For very many oh, people yeah. who are popular Let's Players on YouTube, the line is not clear at all. It's clearly about them. And, ev and you know what, like, annoys me is, like, these people now who are, like, Oh, I can't believe Nintendo's doing this. Fuck it. Like, you kind of complain about these people, and you sort of, like, put on the back burner. Like, you have to stand up and say, I'm sorry, you suck. I'm not just talking about PewDiePie, but I'm talking about a lot of people like him and shit. Like, the more you let that go on, and the more you let people think, that's what Let's Play is, that's what the norm of Let's Play is, in, or whatever, that, sorry, then no fucking wonder the companies do that. Yeah, well, I think that's what the norm of it is becoming, to some degree, on YouTube. People call themselves content creators, but they're either putting a little box with their face in it or just doing a silly voice or just kind of mumbling their way through something and then calling it their content. Absolutely, and there's going to be a point when, like, there's no strategy guides, there's no reviews even, you know, because of, like, all these people who just, like, put no effort up. All they do is buy the HD capture device and just just spout over it, you know? So, so Apage is the real problem here. Well, El, to be frank, Elgato makes good... If she captures devices too. Sure. Let's talk about Mac capture devices now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, but you see my point though. It's just like it's one thing to be passive and say like ah those people they get their numbers, but I'm the real deal. But it's like if you don't complain about it or you don't do anything about it, look what the fuck happens. Nintendo wouldn't do this if it was just like uh, Proton John playing Super Mario ROM hacks or or if the Wii U was successful. That's true. <laughs> That's, by the way, completely ridiculous. <laughs> but, um, no, no, no. Uh, no, it, it is, though. I mean, it's crazy to say, right, like, right. they weren't doing well with the Wii U, so they went after Let's Play. That's nuts. I, I find it funny. Like, Nintendo's known about Let's Play for a while, too. Like, they've done their own. And as you said, they've, they've asked you to promote it. Right. Like, yeah. promote them via Let's Play. I... <laughs> it, it's all strange. It's all strange is the best way to put it, really. Right. And I think we do agree that, you know, we are we do seem like we support Nintendo's decision to some degree, which we do, but we're not saying it's a smart business decision. No, I, the, here's the problem. Like, there's no clear should be a winner on this side. Like, there's there's con yeah. pros and cons to both sides. It, the way I look at it is this. Um, Nintendo is absolutely within their right to do this. There is just no way of saying they shouldn't have... I shouldn't say that. It's hard to say how Nintendo benefits from this decision it benefits short term financially sure very short term but then long term you look at pr stuff okay. i'm sorry if people hadn't turned let's play into what it is now they would have been much less inclined to so if you're it, saying it's your fault yeah. if <laughs> okay. no it, it, i mean if it really i i really believe this if it hadn't been about like let's play is me 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 i'm just talking by the way there's a video game here who gives a fuck you know what i mean yeah. like if someone did that to your video game that you worked on, you would get mad. You would be like, I worked so hard on this, and this asshole's talking about fucking cupcakes or, like, solar lights or some bullshit. And, like, people Googled him and found him because they wanted to see the new, uh, give me a game here. Call of Duty. Metal Gear. Call of Duty. They wanted to see the new Call of Duty. I worked fucking months on that. And now he gets, like, thousands of dollars because he's talking about, like, for 20 minutes of effort. Yeah, exactly. Of course you'd get mad. And of course you'd be like, yeah. fuck him. Give me, give, you know, give me some fucking ad revenue. But, like, on the other hand, if you had someone who, like, pulled out one of my older games that nobody saw, maybe I'm selling it on the virtual console again, maybe I'm showing people this thing that they've never seen before, or maybe, god damn it, I waited three months after the original goddamn sales and fucking, like, showed it to them again after the fact and got the news. Of course I'd be more fucking amenable. Of course I'd be like, thank you for the free promotion. Take your fucking ad revenue. I don't care. 
you know, I, like, I just, there's just a point where it's like, I'm sorry, stop promoting your fucking self on my goddamn product, on the fucking my back that I worked on, you know what I mean? Well, that's the thing, like, don't support people who do that. Support people who do good Let's Plays. I say go farther than that. You don't have to actively attack them or whatever, but really, like, discourage people from it. Just yeah, be like, that's this it. is, like, this is just garbage. Like, watch another channel like this instead. Don't just be like, oh, those guys, hoo hoo. You know, he, here's the thing, though. Like, this becomes an argument about YouTube itself, then, at this point, or, like, the people who watch it. Because you can argue lowest common denominator appeal with the fact that, like, there's people who focus over themselves over the game. Sure. So then it becomes more about the person who's watching the videos and promoting it than the actual person who's creating the videos. Then it becomes like a whole different thing altogether. You excited for Man of Steel, John? Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Iron Man 3? I've, I've yet to see an Iron Man. And how's Man of Steel going to affect your Let's Play, John? Mm, <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing that, I guess. Mm. 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 Did, did we do it? I think we solved all the problems. <laughs> Every single one. I'm so angry. I'm actually in the Nintendo boardroom right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been recording this in front of everyone. I've had sex with Yoshio Sakamoto three times during this. Oh my god. I'm impressed it was so quiet. Nintendo, you've got to go. Thumbs down. <laughs> Unlike this comment on their Miiverse. Oh, have you heard about people supposedly pr uh, starting, like, a petition on the Miiverse about this? Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I, I know, like, there's always the knee-jerk reactions when things happen. Like, there'll be the Miiverse posting, there'll be, like, hashtags on Twitter, and there'll be the videos, and it'll just keep going like that. L like, really grassroots about Nintendo making money. I knew protesting on PlayStation Home wasn't the right move. <laughs> Sorry, I was just, uh, I was looking at, uh, some Twitter comments and seeing if anything related to what we said or had a good argument. Well, you've been, uh, arguing with quite a number of people on Twitter recently. I, this whole thing makes me, like, just, like, so exasperated. I just, I, I just feel like it's so obvious, you know? I, I, I just, the way I looked at it, I felt like Let's Players, back when we did them or whatever, and maybe I'm crazy here, were, like, sort of surrogate game designers, and you show off these games because you're, like... Isn't this, like, a great thing that they did? Isn't this a cool thing? You know what I mean? Like, you want to show off that aspect of the game? That's totally what I got from your Super Metroid LP. <laughs> well, all right. I mean, I just... <laughs> it's totally true. We're, we're, we're not exactly immune from everything ourselves, unfortunately. No, that, that's fair. I just... I, I don't know. It, it's... I just... I can't see this argument from a lot of perspectives. I really try. I'm not trying to be a dick and be like... People who are exasperated at this are, are totally fucking wrong, but it's just, like, it's just crazy to me. The, I'm sorry, developers deserve to eat, and they deserve to get to say where their content goes. I'm repeating myself like a million times over. Why don't you just cut my mic off and you and John talk? I think that would be for the best. Yeah, I'm editing out all of your audio in post, actually. That's probably a wise idea. Yeah, that's fair. I wasn't even recording, actually. No oh, good. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> this is why someone drove into my house, by the way. Because you got upset at Nintendo? Yeah. I, believe I was it. trying to bring a circle into it. Thanks for ruining it, John. That's what I do. I, I have to ruin everything funny. I know. That's why I'm surprised you invited me back. I know. Well, I'm running ad revenue now on all your fucking videos. Shit! Just for that. You fucking ruined everything. So, uh, best vacation ever? <laughs> <laughs> this is a regular weekend at Bernie's for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Well, I think we did it, guys. Didn't you just say that, like, five minutes ago? Yeah, but no one responded. I think we did it, guys. We did nothing. He's right! We totally did! All of the problems have been solved, Let's Play has a new direction, and we are the forefront of it. Na next topic, world peace. Did nothing! We did everything. <laughs> what, what can be done, though? This is a case of, like, we can't, there's no real easy way to change anyone's opinion about it. Let's, let's, let's theoretically state if suddenly these people who are doing it for themselves changed their mind and made it focus on the game. Would that accomplish anything at this point? Like, I think the trigger's been pulled. So, like... Pandora's box has been opened. Yeah. Actually, that's one thing I want to bring up. Has 
Pandora's box really been opened? I mean, when you think about who is being vocal about this, this is, you know, not gamers, it's this Let's Play community. Is that really, at this point in time, a large portion of people who will even hear about this, who buy Nintendo products, who use Nintendo products? Will it reach a wide swath of people? Did you see Proton John's PAX panel? That was... <laughs> Uh, no, easily, I was asleep. I was asleep during it. There is easily like a hundred people there. It's a lot of people for the internet. Hmm. No, I, I don't know. I think I think Let's Play is starting to like gain some traction. And... I, I agree that it's gaining traction, but I just wonder how much when you compare Let's Play people to a general gaming audience. I mean, Nintendo is such a casual gamer sort of audience already. Is it going to have any sort of tangible impact is what I'm wondering. Well, I'd say like a large chunk of like hardcore gamers are fairly aware of Let's Play in general, so... Hardcore yeah. gamers don't play Nintendo games, John. Oh, oh, my, my bad, my bad. No, I, oh god. You guys are making this so controversial. Um, I, I think the... I think the gravy train is going to end at some point. Like, they're... You know, Nintendo's noticing it's not going to take a while before other people do. Yes, some developers come out and say, hey, please, monetize our games or whatever, but... There's going to be a point when less and less of them do that, you know? Well, I think, yeah, it's just on a case-by-case -case basis again, you know? I think it'll get to a point where gaming company X says, yeah, go ahead, that's fine, we don't care, promote our game. You know, Nintendo says, we get the ad revenue. Other game company says, no, we'll strike that down. This is already something that's starting to happen, so... I just, I just think, like, if, if the Let's Play notion is to promote the game in general. You don't have to kiss its ass. If it sucks, it sucks, but if you make it less about, hey, this is the slow beef show... By the way, video game. You know, this wouldn't happen in the first place. Buy Mario Galaxy 2, guys. <laughs> you fool. You failed immediately. Oh. Um, no, but actually, John's right, though. I mean, at this point, yeah, I think, I think Pandora's box has been opened, and there's nothing you could really do. Yeah. I'm just wondering how far the box will reach. I think one thing we didn't mention, too, is that like a number of other companies have been striking down things quietly, too. Like, remember, you said Capcom got one of your RPs, right? That's right, Capcom right. does. And it wasn't a copyright thing, it was just another content ID kind of deal. Yeah. To be clear, third-party match. Meaning, right. like, it doesn't strike against your account, but you don't make revenue off it. Yeah, uh, Konami's been doing the same thing as well. Yeah, Konami's, Konami's really random. Like, some of your Konami shit will get hit, some of it won't. Again, though, not content IDs, it's a third-party match thing. Yeah, so in the long run, like, it's just revenue that's lost. Like, the, the channels don't have any strikes. Yeah, yeah. So again, if you like the games and want to promote them, that should not impede your progress. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing, I don't mind if Let's Players make money per se. I just sure. feel like I just feel like, you know, there's a pretty clear notion of when you're when you're trolling for it. You know? Well, I mean those people will eventually get what's coming to them though, right? <laughs> yeah, well, well I'm, I mean... I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm optimistic. <laughs> John, are you a YouTube bounty hunter? It's the only reason I'm still alive. No, that's what, that's what kills me, I think, is that really the gravy train will come to an end where all the video game people decide, yeah, you know what, except for indie gamers and, or indie game development studios and all that. They just decide, you know what, this is not in our best interest to let anyone do this um, unless it's people we've prepaid or pre-prepped for it. So send in your applications. So what you're saying is we're going to be to a point where companies are hiring Let's Players. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think so. No, absolutely, 100%. Like, I think without a doubt. I mean, why do I... Again, like, you know what? If I'm Nintendo, and I'm already, like, getting your ad revenue, why the fuck not, like, pay a guy to, like, promote my games insofar as, say, these are the greatest games or whatever. I'll hook him up with the best HD capture equipment. I'll give him not only day one fucking software, I'll give him the fucking alphas, you know? And he's an independent Let's Player. He's Johnny Gamer, and, you know, he's got fucking Mario 4 before anyone else. You know what I mean? I feel like an old man. Like, what the fuck's Mario for? I feel like that's gonna. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna cause a problem though, because it's gonna be like super obvious fake. Then in that case, though, like if a company is, and I say this knowing we have done a video for Nintendo, I was like, we we liked that game before they asked us to do it. So like in that case, it's fine. But if someone's approached with a game right off the bat and it's like, oh, I'm super gung ho about this, it's gonna come off as phony. Like it's gonna be basically then Let's Play is just reduced down to its core of like a marketing gimmick. Yeah, but if you're, like, fucking filing copyright against everyone else and shit like that, what's the alternative? Good point. And, and I'm just saying, like, that's the thing. Like, you do got to play nicely with the developers. You don't have to be, you don't have to suck their dicks in and say, like, their games are all great. But, like, 
again, if you put your, if you put yourself out there over the game and you make the game as a platform for you to step on and promote yourself, then look what the fuck happens. They're like, no, 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 no. I that's my money. You wouldn't be anything without my games that I work for fucking months on. And it's hard to dispute that they are right. You know what it is? I think if I just repeat my same argument over and over again, <laughs> it seems like so much better. Phoenix Wright did that, right? No. I think it's Stockholm Syndrome finally setting in. Thanks a lot, John. Thanks for fucking up Let's Play for all of us. Yeah, it's clearly my fault. I know. You're the one taking Let's Play vacations. <laughs> you thought you were planning that in 2007? I don't think so. Uh... I'm still here in Alabama. Where's my Let's Play vacation? <laughs> This is your Let's Play Vacation, this podcast. Motherfucker. I know. You didn't save up enough vacation hours through Retsu Prey. Damn it. Is there any is there any other like the things that people could argue that we didn't give uh fair time to? Things like why Nintendo's wrong for doing this. Really Besides... really it was just the ethical thing of like profiting off of fan made content. And I mean it, it like some people were saying reviews, they're profiting off of that. Some people were saying fan made videos, but I haven't seen proof of that yet. I just don't want people to say out of this, like, um, oh, you're totally biased or whatever. You know, I, I genuinely would like to hear a counter-argument, but there just aren't very many great ones as far as I know. I think once, like, the dust settles on this, maybe you'll start hearing more coherent counter-arguments, but there just hasn't okay. really been any co- amidst all the chaos. Maybe that's maybe that's a subject for Retsu Talk episode 25. Which will start right now. <laughs> <laughs> Which has already started. Right. We've been talking about this for an hour twenty. So, uh, I had this guy called. Timer up. We had our pre-show warm-up before then. Mm-hmm. Entertain the crowd a little bit. <laughs> we talked about what I'd get mad at first. It's, it's you, me, the viewers. Oh. No. no, we like you, John. So when will Happy Wills file copyright claims against PewDiePie? Oh, uh, just so we, just so you know, by the way, um, <laughs> the Happy Wills guys don't like the Let's Plays. <laughs> just saying. We got that. We got that on uh, the download. Inside low. info. Exactly. And now it's public. Yes. Doesn't feel like his game anymore. Apparently. Also, he liked Adult React to PewDiePie. Thank you, um, Tim Lonachi. That's what rhymes with his real name, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so look forward to my Mario Happy Wheels Let's Play. Which I'll be <laughs> replacing Mario Galaxy Two with very shortly. <laughs> I'll be webcamming. I'm so sick of this fucking podcast. Why don't we just end it? Proton John, you were nothing. Yep. You didn't bring anything to this whole conversation. Thanks for... Anytime. I'm glad I took time out of my Let's Play vacation. You are nothing. You are garbage. But if you could promote Retsu Talk on the Runaway, guys... No, that'd be great, please. That uh, would... Please. So appreciate it. We need it, actually. Okay, but I can't say your name because then you can sue me for ad revenue. Uh. It's okay, I'll be bleeping out every time we say Nintendo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give Chugga and uh, Nintendo Capri Sun my best when when you're in bed with them, you freak. Um, <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even bothering the counter-argument because I know it's not going to do a thing, single thing. So I will tell them we said hi and whatever. Give them a fist bump for us. One of those non-ironic ones. Just, just, just for you. Does it have to be non-ironic? Can we please end this, let your talk not awkwardly in some way? No, this is awkward pauses, the podcast this time. So, yeah. Oh, I edit out the pauses. So that this is a corn check video now? It is. Nice. Corn check, baby, please. Any plugs, guys? Mm. That's a good John. plug, Slow Beef, thanks. John? Vacation, great, great thing to take. Check out John's vacation, which we'll post on the Runaway Guys now that he can't post Nintendo games anymore. It's just going to be pictures of me just sitting on a couch staring at a wall. It'll be pictures of all three of you guys just looking down. <laughs> sad, sad music will be playing the entire time. Charlie Brown theme. Yep. Why not? I, I don't have anything to plug either. Um, I have a new Let's Play starting very soon that I haven't told anyone about. <gasps> it's not what you mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, is it? No, this is a new one. This is going to be a simultaneous Let's Play Red Spray. Ooh. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. This was the worst time to LP the Me Parade. <laughs> <laughs> God. 
and the game is called Nintendogs. <laughs> I see no problem. And by the way, it's going to just have revenue for ads that I promote. You want to buy some ribs? Buy it through Slow Beef's Barbecue. It's on the banner ad right at the bottom. Yo, that's Nintendo. Oh. Seriously, Nintendo's a bunch of corporate pigs and I hate them. Should I tell this podcast Nintendo? John, your thoughts? Don't post this podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shit, he knew what I was thinking. We're in hour five of the post show. <laughs> no, it, I think the whole topic's ridiculous, but I mean, like, there's not much else can be said about it, so. Yeah, I mean, it'll be something that'll still be, it'll continue to evolve, new things will happen, so look forward to that. Maybe, maybe someone will have a good argument against what Nintendo did. Are you going to have police officers at your next panel, John? I think I need to. Mm -hmm. Or either that or I'll be pulled down for playing games on the screen that are Nintendo made. We'll be on the lookout for that. Everybody donate to Chugga Conroy's, you know, homeless shelter fund. He's got nothing now. No, I'm kidding. Um, Brutal challenge. Can you throw this wadded up $100 bill in this cup? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Alrighty. <laughs> I think I have interesting Let's Play shit to talk about next week, but we'll see what happens there. Next, We're making this weekly again? No, I, I don't know I'm talking about that. Okay. I just made that up entirely. Next time, please, don't make us commit. <laughs> John, thanks for thanks for joining us on this. No worries. Uh, glad to be here. Glad to be made fun of as usual. <laughs> gotten gotten used to it at this point. <laughs> John. I know. We talked to you about this. Low self-esteem helps me so much. It, it's mm -hmm. a good coping mechanism. No, it's good. That's why you're the third watched of the Runaway guys. Yeah, pretty much. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out, by the way. It feels great. Yeah, no problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, like, stifle so many mean things I could have said just now. But anyway. Um, no, seriously, you suck. You're terrible. I hate you. Thank you. No problem. We did it. Yay! 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 Yay. I'm, I'm going to go cry myself to sleep now. <laughs> Don't do that. We love you. What a great guy. Is he gone? Because seriously, dead weight. Dead weight, Marty. Yeah, you want to re-record this right now? I'm sorry, I thought I was talking to Proton John. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, okay. Alright, we're done? Yes, we're done. I think we're done.